Um, but let's do this. Let's go ahead and go before the Lord in prayer this, morning, this evening, if you don't mind. Shall we? Let's just get ourselves, our hearts ready, our, our focus on him tonight. So let's do this. Let's go before the Lord. Father, we thank you for this day. God, we thank you for the goodness you've already done and the goodness you have in store for us this evening, tomorrow, and the days ahead, Father. God, we thank you that you are faithful to finish what you start in our lives. And God, for all of us, you've begun good and great things. So, Father, tonight, we humble ourselves before your word. God, today we say we need you now more than ever before. God, so we ask that you would open our minds. God, that our hearts would be soft to be molded by you. God, that our eyes would be fixed to see things your way. And God, that our ears would be attuned to the voice of the teacher of the church, the Holy Spirit. Tonight, God, we need you. God, tonight, the people that we interact with, they need you. So fill us up so we can spill out into the world around us. Father, today, we put our eyes on Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name, we pray. And we all say, amen, amen, amen. amen. All right, go ahead and grab a seat. Grab a seat, grab a seat, grab a seat. Okay, well, um, as I was so graciously introduced, of course, you know, my name is Richard Villanueva, youth pastor here at the Rock Church. Um, it has been quite a busy week. Uh, you know, and just to echo what Pastor Luke said and to echo what uh, PJ, uh, the, the shift youth uh, worship leader, was saying, uh, I, I, I was there last night with the young adults, and man, they were... They were wild, you know? I mean, I have, and I, I, I'm just so blessed by all of the ministries here because I've been to children's camp and they are crazy. Of course, I've been through over a decade of youth camps and they're absolutely wild. And now with these shift retreats, man, I'm telling you, and no matter what age you're at, no matter what stage of life you're in, man, there is something and some place for you guys to get plugged into the things of God. I, mean, yeah, I don't know. I don't know if we know how good we got it here, but man, we are blessed. So uh, I'm just, just super proud to call this place home. Now, Whew, now, with all these things, um, you know, uh, uh, we've, uh, we've decided to do this In Him series, and it's just so groundbreaking in your faith. Uh, if you, don't, if, if you don't, have not yet got a hold of these truths and realities, I'm telling you, man, it, there is so much more that God has in store for you, because these are the very things that anchor your life. You know, being um, a youth pastor, working with young people, um, the, I, I, I'm familiar with a lot of struggles that young people have. And um, I've noticed that teenagers are just like older children. Um, they, they, they throw similar tantrums. They have similar selfish desires. And, and, and working, with, um, working with adults in my volunteer ministry, just being an adult, uh, having family members, I found out that adults are just like older teenagers. Um, <laughs> Come on, you, if we're honest, come on, if we realize that, I don't care how old you are. We, it, it, we just have this strange habit of, of having a hard time kicking the flesh, right? And, and today, um, this struggle I, I, I've seen with a lot of young people, I, I think a lot of times when we don't address it, it follows us through to our older years. Um, and, and, and I was super blessed to be able to begin to deal with it when I, when I got saved as a teenager, but... Um, uh, there's this, there, there's this saying, there's this challenge we go through in discovering ourselves, right? I, I've heard it said before. I'm just trying to discover myself. I, I just don't know who I am. I mean, identity is such a funny thing, especially now in these days. It, it's such a hot topic. Like you, you shouldn't talk about it too much because then it, you know, at least not over dinner, because then it becomes kind of ugly. But identity is such a such a strange thing now in these days. And. And, and, and we have so many people just searching on this journey. I've got to travel the world and I've got to experience this and that so I could know who I really, really, really am. And, and am I really this way or that way or was I born this or that? And everything can just be boiled down to these two words in him. You see, I, I found in my life that I, that I ask fewer questions when I ask the right questions. And, and when we can find out the answers to who are we in him, rather, rather this, who has he said I am, then the answers just seem to come to us instead of us having to go out and chase after them. So today, let's ask the right questions. Today, if you will, I'd like to take you to a passage in Colossians. Go ahead and turn to Colossians, second chapter. And I'd like, I'd like to talk to you about this in him reality. Now, this is a really power-packed verse, so I, I want to get into this because I think it just follows really, really in, a, in a really neat way after the past couple weeks with Pastor Luke just sharing about um, the importance of making sure your water heater works and um, finding out the importance of the new creation of realities, who we are in him, looking at the different things that, that God's spoken over us, that we don't have to be a person that performs for God's uh, approval. And here we come to this place in 
Colossians, this in him reality that God spoke in, and he says this. He says in Colossians 2, verse 8, the Apostle Paul writes a warning, and he says, Beware. Beware lest anybody cheat us through the philosophy and empty deceits. These deceits that are according to the, the traditions of men, according to these basic principles of the world, these are not according to Christ. For in him dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. In him dwells the fullness of the Godhead bodily. And then he brings it home here at this part of the passion. He says, and you are complete in him who is the head over all principality and power. You got these two in him statements right here that are just, just, just rounding out this beautiful statement, this beautiful warning about these, these false identities that can seep, in, seep into our lives. And it really is, it's just, it's, it's just this nice, tasty, full meal that God served, us, served up for us here in this passage. It, 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 it's interesting to see how closely our identity is wrapped up in the truth of who he is. You see, um, I, 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 I found out in my life that without him, I have nothing but lack. See, it, sometimes you could find out what something is by looking at what it's not. You see, because in him, I, I, I find my, that I am complete. But apart from him, apart from Christ, outside of him, I'm left wanting for so many things. We're left on this journey where, where, where it, it, it's, it's like eating a bag of chips and not having any water afterwards. You just, you're left thirsty. You're left hungering. It, it's, it, it's like eating bad Chinese food. You eat it and an hour later, you're just hungry again, right? And, it's, and I don't know if it's the MSG or the empty calories or what it is, but it's just so unsatisfying once it settles. And we're left, and, and the world leaves us these things. Yeah, it's kind of funny. Um, I got saved as a teenager, uh, you know, right around the beginning of my high school years, and um, it, it affected a lot of my friendships. It affected the way I interacted with a lot of people in my life. And um, I'll never forget this. I'll never forget the story of um, this one football game I went to. I remember, I was at a football game, and I was getting ready to leave. It was over, and I was walking out to the uh, walking out of the parking lot, and I saw one of my friends, VW Beetles. It was it was it was a, it was a bug. And um, as I was walking to the parking lot approaching his, his car, I, I, I vividly remember him sticking his head out of the car and just, just getting sick all over the place. He just let it go. And he had been drinking the entire time. I mean, his friends had just been getting wasted and they were just drinking alcohol and just binging. And he just let go. Months later, I remember talking to a really close friend of mine and she was just sharing with me um, all the regrets I was going to have in life. Um, she had gone to church for a while and began to just, you know, do her own thing. And she shared with me, and she began to say, you know, Richard, I, I, I just don't get it. You're so wrapped up in church, you're missing all these different things. I mean, going out with my friends and these parties and this and that, and we're just living life to the fullest. She's, she told me, you know, these are the greatest years of our lives. And she says, you know what, Richard, you're going to get older, and you're going to start doing these things, and you're going to look back and just really realize how much you missed out during this time of life. And, and you're just wasting your time with this stuff. There'll be plenty of time for this afterwards. And here I am, 34 years old, getting old. I was at the ship retreat, one of the oldest people there, so I, I'm old now, I guess. <laughs> and I look back at my life and I think, I don't know. I, 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 don't, I don't know what I was missing, but I kind of like the way things are turning out. Yeah. I, I mean... I, I, I look at the way life is, and if I was to look at the timeline of my life, m the adventure began the day I walked the aisle and gave my life to Jesus Christ. I, I, I don't know who's spreading this vicious rumor about Christianity being boring, but I think they're doing it wrong. Like, like I just think they're missing something. Like, I, I, it's, it's, it's like, are you watching the same movie that I'm watching? Because I don't remember that part. And, 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 and my life, I mean, 
my faith has taken me around the world. My faith has brought me to broken people to see their lives miraculously changed and turned around. Not, my faith has brought me to some of the greatest questions mankind has ever struggled with and it's provided the answers time after time after time and again. And I don't know if this thing that I was missing was throwing up in a parking lot. I don't know if this thing that I was missing out was like having headaches and wondering what I did the night before. I don't know if this thing that I'm missing is, is trying to fit into weird clothes and dance all night and take strange things and trying to make sure I, I'm drinking drinks that people aren't jacking with. And, and I don't know if this is the stuff that I'm missing out on, but I think I'm okay with that. I found that living the life that I've chosen to live for Jesus Christ, not perfect, I'm still on my way, but I've found that living the life that God has laid out for me, I've, I've saved myself from ask, having to ask so many questions that I don't want the answers to. And, and, and I've found that when we live apart from Jesus Christ, our lives become so full of lack and want. I think, I, I think the appropriate word would be unsatisfied. Colossians just, the, the warning at the beginning of this passage just so lays it out. I mean, Paul just hits the nail on the head and he says, beware lest anybody cheat you. Ugh. Ugh. Cheat you. The word literally means to be kidnapped, to be taken captive by a lie. Through the philosophies, oh, and I love this, the empty deceit. The world, the, the world will promise you everything and deliver nothing. I, I found that every time I listened, every time I listened to the whispers of the world, the temptations of man, and the voice of the enemy, I found out that he, he, he talks a good game, but he can't deliver. It's, the word is so ripe, empty, deceit. Ain't nothing, he's got one, ba he's got one trick in his bag, and it's a lie. And it's just so exposed right here. And, and the funny thing is, like my friend was telling me is, is, and this is the funny thing that I don't get about the lie, is I think sometimes we just buy it and we don't really take a look at it. Because, you know, my, my friend had told me, if you live for God, you're going to miss out on so many things. It's stuff, this idea of stuffy religion. And I, I like the Old Testament, right? It's a problem I have. Um, and, and I just love it. Uh, I can't get enough of it. Um, and I've read a lot of the laws in there, and I just don't see the problem with it. Like, don't get me wrong, we can't earn our salvation, like, the, Jesus fulfilled the law, I get it. But when I look at what the, all the fuss is, I just don't understand it. Like, I, I think of the law, and it's not that bad. Uh, because I think, like, okay, like, like the Big Ten, right? Um, okay, one of the laws is, oh, you know, honor the Sabbath. Okay, listen, one of the laws is take a day off. Now, I don't know if this is some type of religious oppression I have not seen yet, but if God's law is take a day off and think about him, I'm okay with that. Like, that's cool. And then I think, okay, okay, another one. Okay, let's, let's try to think of a really difficult one. Okay, do not murder. Is that what I'm missing out on, is killing people? I, I, I just don't see what the hubbub is, okay? Wait, 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 wait. Okay, let's take a really religious one. Do not covet. Great, so God's telling me not to compare myself to other people so I hate myself. Yeah, I don't know, God, I think I really want that one. I, I just don't feel bad enough about myself. I think I, I think I need a dose of covetousness today. I, is this what I'm missing out? Because uh, I think I'm okay with those type of things, right? I, I, just don't see, I just don't see what we're missing. Uh, Psalm 18 tells us that his ways are perfect. He tells us, God, your way is perfect. The word of the Lord is proven. It works. It is a shield to those who trust in him. When you do things the right way, you don't got to worry about the wrong consequences. I, I, I don't get the oppression part, right? A life without Christ is a life that's left wanting. And then you get to this beautiful part where we find out what it's like without him, and then you begin to find out what it is with him, who we are in him. And I love it because, and, and this next part of Colossians is one of those ones that it's tempting to kind of go over, but you miss, we miss the meat of this 
beautiful word. And it says, in him is the fullness of the Godhead. In, in, second, in, in Colossians chapter 2, it says, in him, in him is the fullness of the Godhead. Now, that is a mouthful. And that is one of those things that is such a statement that if this statement is true, it changes everything. Like, this is one of those statements that you just can't overlook and kind of maybe or hem or haw or possibly. You see, in him is the fullness of the Godhead. You see, in Christ, in him, there is completeness. There's no lack. There's nothing missing. It's the fullness of everything we could ever want. You see, everything I need is found inside of that little piece of that verse. Yeah. Because if in him is the Godhead, if Jesus is who he says he is, he's better than a teacher, he's not just a prophet, not just an all around nice guy. If he is who he says he is, if he is God incarnate, God in the flesh, if he is the one that spoke forth the words, if he was the word that went forth and said, let there be light. I mean, Pastor Luke said it beautiful uh, just the other week when he's talking about John, the first chapter. If he is the light and the life of man, then everything I need is found. He's complete inside of him. Because think about this, if Jesus is God, then he's the one who breathes and planets exist. If Jesus is who he says he is, then everything he so desires is simply a will away. Look, if Jesus is the one that was far off and he came close so that man could know him, then God himself has become accessible to us. And in him is the fullness of every good thing of God. He is incomparable. He is second to none. He is unique. He is the almighty. He is preeminent before creation. All things were made in him and by him and through him. He knows my beginning to the end. He is within, outside, all around, throughout time. He is the one outside of the system that steps into the system to change our lives. He's bigger than us. He's smarter than us. He's kinder than us. And he's everything we've ever wanted. See, in him, is everything I could ever want. And apart from him is nothing I need. <sighs> the disciples, this is one of my favorite verses in the Bible. I have numerous ones. But in John the sixth chapter, Jesus is, is just dropping some, some hard truth. He's just, just dropping, dropping truth like, like dropping bombs on people. And it's just, it's just making people uncomfortable. I like that about Jesus. He's, I, don't think, I don't think anywhere in the Bible it says Jesus was a nice guy. Like I, he's a lot of things, but Jesus was not necessarily a nice guy. And, he, and he's, just, he's just frustrating people. I love it. He's just frustrating people. And he turns around, and as people begin to leave him, because they don't like what he's saying anymore. I mean, he's done giving out the free donuts and the free sandwiches. So they're like, all right, peace, Jesus. Let me know when the, when the bar is open again. And, and, and Jesus turns to his disciples and he says, well, what about you guys? Are you going to bounce too? Are you out of here? And Peter, wonderful, wonderful Peter, turns around. Jesus says, do you want to go away? John 6, 68. But Simon Peter turns and answers to Jesus. Lord, to whom? Lord, to whom? To whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Yeah. Where else? Jesus, we've tasted. I've tasted the world. I've tasted the traditions. And then I've tasted your words. And nothing compares when you have the real thing. <laughs> Peter answers and said, Lord, to whom will we go? Because you, you have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and know that you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. In him is the fullness of the Godhead. In him is the completeness of the Creator. In him is life. And there's no other source. I love how Isaiah tells us, to whom can you compare him to? To whom? Try. Try. Pick another God. 
Pick another belief system. Pick another empty philosophy. Pick another empty deceit. Pick one. Pick an idea and compare it. Put them together. Tell me who's better. I, this is the thing I don't get. When I look at what other gods ask for, I just think it's a raw deal. Like, I hear what you're saying, and I see your belief system, and I'm not here to put anybody down. I'm just here to lift somebody up. I see it, and I hear what you're saying, and I just don't think it's as good of a deal as what God's offering me. Yeah. My friend, throwing up outside of the, the VW bug, I, I don't want that. I, I hear you. I don't think that buzz is worth it. I, I don't think that one night stand is a good idea. I, 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 I just think doing things God's way yeah. is the best way. Yeah. I, I think God's desire is that me to be so lost in him that we begin to, we begin to fight over where the, where the line is blurred. Because I'm so desperately, as PJ said today, immersed in who he is, that I begin to shine and reflect the goodness of God in my life. Amen. You know, it's been said this way, that Jesus plus nothing is everything. But everything minus Jesus is nothing. He's the determining factor on whether or not it's really worth it. And let me lose the entire world, but gain Jesus. Because I think I read somewhere that it's all going to burn anyway. So I'd like the thing that will withstand the fire. So then, if apart from him, outside of him, I find myself wanting. And if I see that within Jesus Christ is the fullness of the Godhead. The one that is above principalities and powers, read, he wins. Then I want to find myself in him. Because in Colossians 2, it, it rounds it out and it says, and I am complete in him. It says, in him is the fullness of the Godhead. And, it, and, and then it says next, and in him, I am complete. You see, this is the challenge that we have with our identity, is we oftentimes try to put the wrong things in the wrong place. And that's, I think, why people end up searching. That's why, we, that, that, that's why we're not comfortable being alone. For those of us that find yourself alone, you're not comfortable with yourself because you know there's something wrong. You don't like looking in the mirror because, because you're incomplete. You see, we, we find ourselves having these challenges, bouncing from relationship to relationship. We find ourselves bouncing from job to job, trouble to trouble, issue to issue. We find ourselves within this place of being a victim time and time again, uh, bouncing from church to church to church to find the right church to make us feel good. Never mind, different message. <laughs> and we, we find ourselves with these challenges be, because we're trying to put the wrong piece in the wrong place. Yeah. You see, it is in him that I'm complete, that I'm made whole. You see, that, that husband, that boyfriend, that girlfriend, that job, that title is not going to make you any better of a person. It's not going to complete you. It, they're just simply not enough. And, and, I, and I've noticed in my, in my years of working with people that two broken people don't make a whole person. It just makes two really jacked up broken people. So we'd all do ourselves a favor by becoming whole before we find another person. And I've found out that children don't fix marriages and college educations don't make us any holier or better than we were before. And, 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 and I've found that another zero at the end of your paycheck just means you spend that extra zero as quickly as before you had it. I, I, these are the things that we chase and these are the things that we look for to, to bring value into our life when all along Jesus, look, this is not new. This is 2,000, at least 2,000 years old, where he says, in him I am made complete. Yes. So let's do the identity test. Because it's been said, that which we worship is that what we become. We're made in the image of God because we're supposed to worship him. So the, what it is we find ourselves worshiping is what we reflect in our lives. It's what we emanate. 
It's what we do. So let's do the identity test. Think of all the different things you identify with. I mean, myself, I, I, myself, I find myself identifying with a lot of things. I have a lot of different hats and roles I wear. Of course, you know, uh, I, I find myself as, as a Christian. I, I, I am a husband. I am a son. I am a, I am a nephew. I, I'm a pastor. I, I'm, I'm a father. I mean, these are all different hats, parts of things I identify with. I, 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 I do enjoy to make and, and, and drink coffee. I, I, may, I may even be a coffee connoisseur. Maybe the word better would be addict. I don't know. Um, <laughs> And, 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 I, and I wear all these different things that I identify with, right? But now we've got to start boiling them down, right? I mean, have you, have you got some of the things to identify with? Or whether maybe you have, you have a, a master's degree in this. Maybe, maybe you find yourself as a president of a company, a CEO. Maybe you find yourself as a delivery person. You know, the different titles we, 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 we own. Begin to boil them down. And ask yourself, which of those identities can change in a day? And I've found that many of us, through the experience of loss, can lose those titles. Once you were a husband, and maybe now you're not. Maybe you were a mother. And by no fault of your own, you find yourself now not. Maybe you had a job and a title, a desk and a business card, and now it's in the trash. You see, these titles we have are here today and gone tomorrow. Even sometimes the ones that we so closely identify with, a talent, a skill, all it takes is an accident. And that title, that identity can be stripped from us. Until you get down to the bottom. And I find the one title that will never leave me is child of God. Yeah. Any mistake I can make, any challenge I can face, if, the, if everything collapses tomorrow and the entire world is shaken and life as we know it is just like it was in the movies that we pay money to go see and wish never happened. And if that happens tomorrow, everything can be taken from me. But I find in scripture that neither depth nor height, no principality, power, demon in hell, I find that no thing can separate me from the very love of God. So the one piece of my identity that can never be stolen or taken from me is the title of child of God. And as long as that becomes the foundation, the very base, the peace that every other thing rests on, then I find that my identity is very secure and I have no place for insecurity or fear because take my job, take my ministry, take my family, but you will never take the love of Christ from me. I dare you to try. Throw me in the deepest pit and he will still love me. Throw me the darkest part of hell and his love will endure. I'll tell you this, let the government go to pot, but Jesus Christ still sits on the throne. And if I'm not mistaken, he has reserved a place for me right next to him. He endures forever. I am found in him. And the mistakes and foolishness in my life can be washed away and put back together by the very love of God that sent his son to the cross. I am found in him. And that's really easy to preach. <laughs> the challenge is tomorrow we actually have to live that. But the challenge is this, is now we know this, but how often is it that those philosophies and the empty deceit come in and they try to woo us away? They offer us a, what they call a better deal. It's like, it's like the white van with no windows that says free puppies, yep. right? <laughs> right? I don't know, that's kind of creepy, right? Sounds like a good offer, but something doesn't seem right about this. If he really had puppies in there, why wouldn't he want windows? No, I, this is a joke, this is a joke. Never mind, 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 never mind. Creeper van. Maybe it's a youth ministry thing, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> but the bottom line is, these two verses are so powerful. Because it, if in him... 
is the fullness of the Godhead. And if we find ourselves able to be in him, then what more can we ask for? What are you wrapped up in? Because it's so easy to get caught in these things. Now, I've, I've, I've met musicians, and they identify their relationship with God with their ability to play a musical instrument. And they sell themselves short because they're more than their talent. Some of us, we equate our relationship with God on, based on how well we parent. We base it on, on how well we present. And this is kind of dovetails off of what Pastor Luke was talking about just the other week, uh, this per performance mentality. But you see, we simply need to strip it away. And the beauty is not neglecting those things. The beauty is that when we wrap ourselves in who Jesus is, he brings to life every other title you find yourself with. You see, when I am in him, I find myself to be a better father. When I am in him, I find myself to be a better pastor. When I am in him and the other things that are a part of who I am, when they rest upon the foundation of Jesus Christ, in whom is the fullness of the Godhead, then the anointing and the blessing of the Spirit begins to bubble up out into my life. And I become a person that images who God is. It's funny because when we are in him, when we, you know, we all say, like, you know, we're made in the image of God, like Genesis 1, right? That's, like, super awesome. But what happens is it goes from being something to who we are to something we do. Like, you kick it up a notch. We begin to image God. We begin to reflect him. Like, we all know we're valuable and important. That's why Jesus died on the cross. But, but when we begin to live inside of the in him realities that we're talking about these Sunday nights... All of a sudden, we go from noun to verb. Does that make sense? You know, it's not just who I am, it's what I do. See, you can be a baker, but it don't matter unless you're making bread. Right? You can be a Christian, but it ain't a thing until you start to image Christ. So the goal would be to find ourselves in him so I can live and breathe and do and move and find my being in him so I can image God. I can reflect his goodness in all that I say and do when I am. 2 Corinthians 12, verse 9 and 10 says, and, and, and Jesus says to the apostle Paul, he says, my grace, my power, my goodness, my strength, my gift is sufficient for you. My strength is made perfect in your weakness. This is, this is interesting here. Therefore, most gladly, Paul says, I will boast in my infirmities, in the power of Christ, that uh, the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, take pleasure in your infirmities. Take pleasure in your reproaches. Take pleasure in your persecutions, distress for Christ's sake. For when, for when I am weak, when I am incomplete, I find that I am strong. I find that I am complete. Pastor Dan is talking about these sufferings this morning. You see, I am, when I recognize that I am so desperately in need of somebody, and I go to that somebody, the capital S, somebody, then I find that I am strong. When we lay our pride down and we recognize the things that we've been replacing and putting on the throne of our heart that, where Jesus belongs, we begin to put him there. We find that we're made strong because he completes us. Just in the next chapter, he tells us, now we're glad because when we're weak and you're strong because we pray. We pray these things that you may be made complete. God's desire is to complete us when we find ourselves in him. I love it because in the beginning in Genesis 1, God fashions Adam and Eve and says, this is so very good. So very good. And then we find ourselves at a place where we're born again. We were dead, but God rises us up. We're made a new creation. And God says, this is so very good. This is so very good. We're made complete in him. So I don't know what your loss has been. I don't know what you've been hoping for or waiting for. Or, I don't know what change that you were just thinking as soon as this happens, everything will fall into place and then I can finally be happy. 
Because we've all been there, right? Can't wait for vacation. Can't wait for the weekend. Can't wait for the raise or can't wait to get the ring on my finger. Can't wait for the new, the new apartment or the new house or I can't wait for this or that or this or that. Because then, every, then every, not other, you're waiting too long. You're waiting too long. You're 2,000 years too late. Because today, we, you, me, can be found in him. And we can image the very good, the very good nature of God. Because in him is the fullness of the Godhead. Where I find myself inside him. So that I do not need to be put off and cheated to live a life that is less than what God has promised me. I don't regret a thing from giving my life to Jesus 20 years ago. I don't regret a thing. I, I don't get what the fuss is all about because I see people that live in the world and I recognize I'm not any better than them because I am just like them. Apart from Jesus, I'm lost. The only difference is I'm not lost anymore and they still are. And that's why the world does what they do, right? Like, I don't know why. I, I don't know why I get mad at people that are in the world because it's just like, well, they don't know any better. They've been kidnapped. They, they, they're dead. They're not lost. They're not just, just lost, but they're dead. They're in the kingdom of darkness. So it's no wonder they stumble over themselves. Because let's be honest, I did the same thing. Let's be honest, I was there too. I'm no better, I just have had the lights turned on. Today, let's be found in him. Today, let's let go and take off the throne of our hearts, all the other things we've tried to identify with and recognize who he's called us to be and who he is that we are called to be in. Today, if you've got something out of God, let's give him a praise. Hey, thanks. You guys were fun tonight. Now, we're not done yet, of course. Um, because, gosh, wouldn't it be just terrible if we just wrapped it up there? Because the whole thing was about being found in him. Yeah. And um, the question, I guess, today is, what are you in? Because some of us in this place are in trouble. And, and maybe you thought you were okay. Maybe you thought that you were in a place that was a good one. But uh, let me tell you, there's more out there. Where, where do you stand in, when it comes to the things of God? Are you okay with him? I mean, let's, let's just even do the scenario, right? It's a scenario. This was your last day on earth. Where would you spend your forever? Because there's one of two choices that God has given us. And I appreciate it because there's only two choices. Lord knows that if we had more, then it would be like standing in a grocery aisle. What cereal do I get? <laughs> so many choices. I have in our help. In him? We're out of him. Uh, even in the Old Testament, I love it, because God just comes to his people and says, hey, guys, life or death, which one do you want? You want to serve me or them? God lays it out pretty simple for us. So the question today is, who have you chosen? Who are you serving? Where are you going? And a lot of us in this place, I figure we would probably say something like, well, gosh, I want to do right. I want to do good. I want to live for God. Or I think God loves me. Jesus loves me. Saw the shirt. So I'm okay. And that's fine. But the problem is God has different terms than we have, right? Wouldn't it be terrible to do this life and find out that we've been giving God something that he never asked for? See, we think a lot of times that, well, I mean, all religion boils down to one thing. You know, you be a good person, you don't hurt people, and you do your best, right? That's what, God, that, that's what the gods want. That's what religion says. Every religion says the same thing. Well, yeah, that's nice and fun, wonderful and dandy, but if you were to actually read what the Bible says, God is not after good. Nowhere will you ever find that God says if we do enough good things and we're going to make it. The funny thing is you actually find he says something very different. He says all of our goodness is just never going to be enough. You see, it's not how good you are compared to that neighbor you don't like down the street. It's how good are you compared to Jesus. And I don't think any of us do a very good job on that one. Like that comparison, I can't win that one. So goodness is not going to cut it. Goodness doesn't get us in. Goodness doesn't make us a Christian or close to God because he's not looking for good. But then we think, okay, well, the G, you know, I'm in church today, didn't fall asleep, Christmas, Easter, I'm here on a Sunday night, somebody invited me, hey, this is great, wonderful, I got this. But God's not looking for a butt in a chair to listen to some guy talk for a long time and sing a song, because 
I do know this is that Jesus Christ did not die on the cross for us to sing a song, to sit in a wonderful air-conditioned room and listen to some guy talk. See, if that's your idea of Christianity, you're doing it wrong, and that is not what it takes. Coming into church and being a Christian is the same way of thinking if I go into McDonald's and eat a Big Mac, they'll give me a job. It doesn't work that way. That's not how it works. So coming into church does not make you a Christian any more than coming into McDonald's and eating a Big Mac gets you a job. It's something different than that. But Pastor Richard, I got it. The Bible says, somebody told me that if you love God, you believe in Jesus, then you're good, you're set, you're done, you're ready to go. It's in there, I read it. And that's true, but you can't stop there because the Bible tells us really plainly that even the demons believe in Jesus. The devil himself, look, the devil's not an atheist. He believes in God. And he probably knows more about this book than me and you put together. You see, simply believing is not enough. It would be the same as saying, I believe in the president. I know his first, his middle, his last name. Watched him on TV, know what he looks like. He has a little dog. Saying, I know what his, what his speaking schedule is. But the truth of the matter is we just know about the president. I've never met him, and certainly he's not asking your advice on what to do with China. We just know about him. And we treat God the same way. If I say a prayer, I read a Bible scripture, I went to catechism, Sunday school, whatever the case is, I'm a spiritual person, got my chakras aligned, and I'm all good to go. Then I must be right with God. But my friends, head knowledge does not make your heart genuine. You see, today, Jesus says, it's really easy. This is all I want is everything. Today, the question is, is, have you given him everything? Jesus says this word, born again. That's what it means. You were living life one way, and you said, gosh, I just, I'm doing this the wrong way. I need him. And you turn around and live your life for him. Have you done that? Have you made a decision in your life to give it all to him? Because you see, my friends, Jesus does not want some of you. He does not want a lot of you. He does not even want most of you. He wants all of you. Today, I'm going to tell you this. And this is what changed my life, is I realized that 2,000 years ago, God himself stepped out of heaven, lived, died, buried, and rose again. What did God give me first? Everything. What did God hold back from me? Nothing. So today, what is God asking from me? Everything. What does he want me to hold back? Nothing. Those are the terms. Not for you to be good, nice, perfect, sit in a chair, listen to some guy talk. Not just for you to believe and mentally ascend, but God wants all of you. My friends... You know this deal. You know, some 14 years ago, I walked down an aisle. I saw this really pretty girl. I gave her a ring. She said, I do. I said, I do. We kissed. She changed her name, and bang, we were married. A couple simple words changed my life. Today, God is waiting for you to walk and tell him I do. To pray these words, to pour out your life and give your everything to him. You see, I committed to this woman every day of my life. No vacations, no days off, no breaks, not just on the weekends or a couple hours on Sunday. I gave her everything. It's funny because it sounds like God's asking the same thing from you and I. Not just Sunday, a couple prayers, a few visits. But God wants everything. Does that sound like your life? Or is God just here when you're in trouble? Is God just somebody you think about every once in a while when you throw up a prayer? Today, are you born again? Have you given God all of your heart and all your life? Because if you haven't, I have good news. He's not mad at you. He's just waiting on you. So if you're in this place and you've never given your heart to God, maybe you walked away, you did this as a child, and now, you know, you're doing your own thing. Maybe you were like some of the things we we're talking about today. You've been living your life your way and you've been trying to kind of just really finding out that it's not what it was all cracked up to be. And now you need God to rescue you, to change your life. If that's you in this place, if you've never done this before, you know you need to. If you feel your heart just beating a million miles a minute, then right now is your chance to say your commitment, to say I do to Jesus today. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to count to three. Minutes. One, two, three, right like that. If you're in this place, when I say three, all together, if you need to give your heart to God, if you need God to change your life, if you need to give your everything to him right now, if you need to say, I do, then I'd like you to do that by putting your hand up, putting it right back down. Simple as that in just a second. And by do that, you're saying, I do. 
God, I want you to change my life. By putting your hand up, you're saying, God, I'm ready to commit. God, I'm ready to give you everything. Not be perfect, but to give you everything. It's funny, when I walked down that aisle in my wedding, I, I didn't say any vows to be a perfect husband. I made a vow to be a faithful husband. Today, that's what God wants from you. So if you need to get right with God, you've been running from God instead of to God, if you're doing more of your thing than God's thing, today, right now, on the count of you, I want you to get your hands up. Don't wait for anybody else. Don't look around. Not, 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 not any of their business. This is between you and God right now. So if that's you on this, in this place, get your hand up if you need to get right with God. Ready? One, two, three. Who in this place needs to get right with God? Thank you right there. One, two. Who else? Hold on. We do, don't clap just yet. Just yet. Uh, then people start clapping instead of getting their hands up. Three over here. Anybody else? There's three people. Anybody else in this place? We're going to all clap and celebrate in just a second. Oh, over here, over here too. I need stronger contacts. Got you over there, over there. Cool. Oh, two right over here. Okay, that's five. Five people. Anybody else in this place? Five people. Who else needs to get right? Who, who else needs to start this adventure? Because life is just too boring without Jesus. I couldn't do it. I'd go crazy. Oh, over here. Over here. Oh, got you, got you. Okay, six. Who else in this place needs to get right with God? Hey, he's waiting. Let's not keep him waiting. Over here, over here, another one. Wave at me, wave at me. Over here, over here. There you go. Got you, got you, got you. Anybody else? Six, I don't know, seven. I'm really bad at math. Uh, yeah. Six or seven. I don't know. Seven sounds good. Seven. Anybody else in this place? Anybody else in this place? I love it. Over here. What is this? Like, we're all going to do this one at a time? In the, oh, the family room. Got you, got you. Eight. That sounds good. Hey, if you need to get right with God, let's do this now. Get your hand up. What are you waiting for? Who else? Where are you at? Who else? If you felt like God has failed you in the past, maybe you did this Christian thing. And it didn't turn out like you expected. And maybe you felt disappointed by God. I don't know if this is in this room or online or whatever the case is. But you came here kind of like a last ditch effort. If that's you in this place, I want you to know this. God didn't fail you. I'd like you to know he just wasn't done yet. Now is your opportunity to pick up where you left off because God is still waiting to give you the thing, the moment, that promise. He's just waiting to give it to you. If that's you in this place, you need to get right with God. Whether that's you or not, if you just know, if there's anybody else in this place and you need to give it, give your life to God in this place, get your hand up. Anybody else? Last call, last call, and then I'm done. Over here, I got you. Anybody else in this place? Anybody else in this place? Last call, last call, because I'm done. There's tacos outside. Got you. We got to get there, right? Over there. Okay, over there. Who else in this place? All right, forget the tacos. There's souls. Who else in this place? I was three or four more, so that's like 10 or something like that. Yeah, who else? Who else? Who else? Who else? Oh, got you, got you, got you, got you, got you, got you. Anybody else in this place? I need a telescope, man. My eyes. Over there. Oh, they're pointing over there. Another one. And another one. Who else? Who else? Who else? Who else? We're waiting on you. Like you're that important. You're that important that we wait for you. Anybody else? If you thought God forgot about you, no. He's waiting. Like, he knows your name. I don't, but he does. Who is it? Who is it? Who is it? Last call in three. In two, we got to shut it down. One, last call, last call. And a half. <laughs> right? All right, let's give God a praise. Cool. All right. Man, this is good. I know my, we're, we're doing small groups over in the youth ministry. They'll be mad at me because we're like five minutes early. They're like, five more minutes to talk with these teenagers. They really like their kids. But let's do this. Everybody in the whole room stand up. Let's all stand up in this place. If you got your hand up, 
or you know you should have. You were that one that when I was counting a half, you know you should have. If you got your hand up or you know you should have, I want you to come forward real quick right here. Just come up here with me at the front. Come on up. Remember we talked about walking the aisle? This is the part where we say I do. Come on, come on, come on. If you need to bring a friend, bring a friend. If you need to drag somebody forward, drag them forward. Come on. Come on, let's get up here. All 10 or whatever it is of you. Come on up, come on up, come on up, come on up, come on up. Come on up. If you saw somebody get their hand up and they're not moving, this is your chance to be a friend. Tap on the shoulder, come on up. Anybody else? Come on up, come on up. Come on up. Man, here, look at you guys. Anybody else? Anybody else? All right. Well, hey, congratulations, guys. This is just the beginning. And I love it because he's the God of new beginnings. Like yesterday, I don't know what yesterday was like, but it doesn't matter anymore because God's, a God, God's got bigger and better for you. This is just the beginning. And everything that's ever gone wrong, God's going to do something amazing. And I don't know how, but he's going to make it turn into something beautiful because you need a lot of fertilizer to make a really nice garden, right? Well, you guys have been working on the fertilizer part. Right, right, right. Good job, good job. And now it's time for the flowers. The Bible says you're born again, which means that there's a new way of living now. Right? So let's do this. I talk too much. I apologize. Let's pray together. And you know what? You have this wonderful family behind you that's going to pray with you. So let's talk to the Lord. I'd like to lead you in a prayer. So if we could all, let's bow our heads and let's pray today. Repeat this prayer after me. It's okay if you miss a word. It's about the heart. But let's tell God our vows today. Let's pray. Say this. Say, Dear Father God, Dear Father God we, come to you we come to you in Jesus' name. In Jesus name. And, tonight, and tonight, we lay our lives down. We lay our lives down. And, we and we take yours up. Change me. Change me. Make, me new. Make me new. Wipe away my past. Away my past. And give me a new future. Me a new future. Because tonight, yes. I belong to you and you belong to me. I am a Christian. I am born again. I'm brand new and I'm leaving hell behind and I'm on my way to heaven. In Jesus name, amen. Let's give God a praise. Yeah. All right. My right, your left, I got Pastor Joel here, one of the best Men around, man. He is top notch. Good guy. And he dresses nice. <laughs> Pastor Joel is super cool. Not weird at all. Um, that's me. He just wants to give you some free stuff. Hey, can't go wrong with free. Take like two, three minutes. Tell you guys what to do next. Because, right, that's like the important part is what's next. Well, he's going to get you set with that. If you don't know anybody, he's going to get you knowing somebody. Give you a friend. Tell you what to do. So go ahead, take a left turn. Follow him just for a couple seconds. And then the tacos will be there afterwards. All right? Go ahead on over. Let's give him a big round of applause. Come on.